Why are we just 1% from all-time highs? Because this is a policy-driven market right now. The market cares way more about what the Fed is doing than about earnings. So in December, you had a changing, kind of a recalibration of the market around earnings growth. But the Fed came out and said, we're going to be very dovish right now. We're not going to raise interest rates through 2019. We're not going to roll off the balance sheet. And that was enough. That mattered way more than people's expectations for earnings. Well, we got a huge week for earnings. So if you had to put two sides on that market scale this morning, you have earnings on one side and you've got the Fed on the other. Which one weighs heavier? Well, the Fed has already weighed in. So we know how the Fed is going to be for the next six to 12 months. So now the new news is earnings. So I do think this starts to matter. Where it really matters is in expectations. So the market has said that they think earnings is going to be down 4% this quarter. If we overshoot that, if it ends up being flat in earnings growth, that's a huge earnings surprise to the upside, and that could be very supportive of higher uh, prices. Do you think the market has bid this up? Rebound, and again, here's the problem with this, with this big run for 2019, is that the pundits will say, well, yeah, but you know, December was so terrible. We're really just kind of getting back what we had lost. Does, does that ring a little bit hollow? Because the market is clearly saying things aren't that bad. Yeah, it's a question. Otherwise, of- we wouldn't have rebounded. Exactly. So, you know, the question is, you know, are we in a better position than we were in December? I think the certainty around the Fed is a positive earnings recession, which we are essentially entering into now and possibly going into in Q2 is worse. But again, it goes back to the Fed policy. That's all that really matters right now. But if we go from an A to an A minus or an A minus to a B plus, those are not terrible grades. Is that sort of the way earnings are? There's no way earnings growth could stay where it was because you had that sort of stimulus shot yes. from the corporate tax cuts. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you had you know, 20% earnings growth in 2018, these massive numbers that no one ever expected would be continued into 2019. But the question is, you know, what is kind of the new trajectory for this end of the economic cycle? I think people would be very happy with low single digit earnings growth. That would still be supportive of the price to earnings multiples we're seeing today. However, if we truly are in a sustained earnings recession, I think that really brings into question, you know, 16, 17 uh, times earnings. Multiples. Do, you, do you think we are or is there a shot that earnings could come in better than people expect? I think, I think earnings will come in better than people expect. You've seen a huge recalibration where basically since the beginning of the quarter to the end was a 7% change in where people thought earnings would be and where they are now. So now we're at this negative 4% expected earnings. If we overshoot that, if we see that uh, stocks are coming in, companies are reporting better than expected, which usually happens, mm-hmm. that's a very good supportive That's uh, a pretty low bar, negative 4% earnings growth. It is. And you see these companies you know, send out negative signals. Analysts seem very negative. But they like to set the bar low and exceed it. You know, On average, companies beat earnings. It's not really a 50-50 split. So if they're saying negative 4%, maybe we end at negative 2, negative 1. That's a positive. The old markets. corporate sandbagging, as exactly. we say. They put that limbo bar at about six feet high, so it's not hard to get under it. Under promise and over deliver. What are the odds of a second half rally, Jay? I think it's it's I think it's very possible because you have a few things coming out. You know, do we see a U.S. China trade deal? Do we see some resolution on Brexit? Um, do we get another kind of push in the markets as the Fed stops rolling off the balance sheet? I think there are a lot of positive things to look forward to. To the negative side of that, though, we're going to have a lot of political uncertainty around the world. You know, we're entering the 2020 election cycle in the U.S. There's big elections in countries like Argentina and India. Those are going to have a big impact on just kind of market perception and volatility.